Well, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. Uh, today on the table in front of us, we have, well, what I think is one heck of a pocket knife. This is the Benchmade 440-1. This is the Benchmade Casbah, and this has just been a real surprise. So, you know, living in California, I don't do a lot of automatics. Um, I've had a few come and go through the channel and of course through my collection. Uh, this one landed a while ago, and I said, well, you know, let's give it a shot. And I have actually sort of fallen in love with it. Uh, now this is an older knife, uh, all the way back to I think 2017 or even a little earlier, uh, but they are still available on uh, Blade HQ in this exact configuration. And uh, they are $161 and change. Now I share that because in the world of autos, you know, 200 bucks and up is not a difficult thing to find. They are very expensive generally, but this, from Benchmade is well pretty reasonable actually for in, in the auto world. So what do you get? Well, you get blue grivery uh, scales that have been sort of milled and shaped in a way that gives it a little bit of grip and some you know some feel in your hand. You get an S thirty V blade that is just beautiful. I mean, it's a kind of a spear point drop pointy thing. <laughs> with a really high sort of saber grind. It's got a nice edge to it. Um, very little billboarding, just the S30V on this side and the Benchmade logo on this side. It does have a lock, which um, you can lock it open. And you can lock it closed, which is very nice in both directions. It has a deep carry clip design. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the way it's placed because of the lanyard hole, you know, it's not disappear in your pocket deep, but it's still deep enough to be really good. And the shape of this clip means that there's no hot spot, at least not for me. Your experience may vary. Um, I've had a fair amount of actually autos, as I said, come through the collection and of course on the channel. Uh, this one is probably one of my all time favorites. I'm not kidding. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is simple. It is elegant. It is well designed. Uh, the blade holds an edge like crazy. I've taken this thing out and used it quite a bit. Um, because of its design, particularly when it's in the pocket, you know, it doesn't scream auto. It just screams pocket knife. Um, the blue, you know, I don't generally do knives that aren't, um, you know, black, silver, or gray. But this is a really nice, deep royal blue. It's got a little bit of jimping back here. I'm, I assume that's in case you are, you know, having a gas station argument. It's got a little jimping up here just before the spine of the blade. There is no jimping on the blade itself, and I have to tell you, I think that was a missed opportunity. But it is <clears throat> really, really comfortable to hold. I think that this is... Now, there was probably a time when this made a big splash, but the knife community moves so fast that things that were a big deal tend to not be a big deal down the road. But the fact that this is still available well under $200 and is as well made and is just sort of attractive as it is meant that I thought I would give it a little airtime. This one is used. It came to us uh, by way of geared towards gears, geared towards geared dad. <laughs> uh, he sent along some knives to women carry knives and this was in the box, which was super generous and kind. And this it's just been a marvelous find. It really, I mean, look at it. <laughs> it is easy to close one-handed. It is very snappy. It's got a little jimping underneath here to catch your finger as well. As I said, it locks both open and closed, which is a really nice feature if you're into locks. You know, I'm not so much, but that's okay. It's got great black hardware. As you can see on this side, as I said, this is used. The black was just a DLC coating and it has worn off on the screw, just on the uh, back side of the pivot, just a little bit. What a fun knife. What a good usable knife. You know, a lot of autos, particularly out the fronts, do not appeal to me. The blades are too narrow, they're too, let's call them task specific. I have always been more of a side firing auto person if I was gonna have an auto, I just prefer them. But a lot of those even lean so far into the sort of tactical, at least imagery, um, that you give up some sort of comfort in hand and you know a lot of other features. The only other auto that I own, 
actually is this. Uh, this is a Hogue, and there's a review coming on this too. This is an older one. You'll even notice that this one is serrated, something I don't normally do, but this knife has a very specific purpose, and we'll get back to that later in another review. But again, it's a side fire, right? Those are the only autos that I really enjoy. So let's get some specs out of the way while we're looking at the Benchmade Casbah here. For your $161 and change, you get one, two, three, and an eighth inch of cutting on one, two, three, and a half inches of S30V. The grip area from just behind the swell, one, two, three, and three quarters, coming up on four past the curve. So it really is just about perfect for my hand. The overall length of this really cool knife, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just under eight inches. It is a really nice carry profile. It's, so here's the thing, you may have heard it when I snapped open this hog. This hog sounds considerably snappier and that has a lot to do with the aluminum scales. The Benchmade Casbah manages to be quick to open and yet relatively quiet because it's snapping open on this grivery stuff. I love that. It's super low key, which makes carrying it in places where you're not really supposed to have an auto much easier to do. I'm not recommending it. Don't go out and get yourselves in trouble. But for me, you know, the fact that you can pop this thing open <laughs> without it going snap um, is of great benefit given the way that I have to carry an auto. Uh, it still opens very quickly, and it opens very firmly. There's no blade play, no rock, no nothing. This thing is locked up tight. Let's do some size comparisons. Excuse my arm. Wow, that was rude. Apologize. Here it is against the, uh, of course, our old friend, the bug out. And as you can see, it is larger than the bug out, but not tremendously so, right? I'll move this down a little bit. Move this down a little bit. And here it is against the uh, full-size Ritter Hogue. Now, the Ritter Hogue and the Casbah are very similar. Uh, of course, the Hogue's a little bit bigger. You get a little more cutting surface, right? But this helps, I think, at least it should, help you understand where this thing is overall size-wise. It's been a real joy to have. And, you know, it's not... It's no thicker through the handle than the Ritter Hogue. It is just a real pleasure to use and to carry. And I think that's awesome. I really do. I wish there were more autos like this. Simple, straightforward pocket knives that just happen to be automatics. I think that would go a long way. Let's get some blade stock stuff out of the way here because I'm curious. The blade stock in Benchmade's really nice S30V is 2.91. 2.9, excuse me, millimeters, so it's not super thick blade stock. Oh, let's do the handle. At its thickest point, which is hard to get to because of that clip, it's just over half an inch, which means that it's not a super narrow carry, but it is a comfortable knife to hold on to. It really is. <laughs> oh, this thing has been an absolute blast to have around. Let's go ahead and weigh it, just because that's something we do here. Oh, I'm sorry about that glare. Uh, the lights are in a weird spot today, but that's all right. You guys can see the important stuff. 3.5 ounces for a 3.5 inch blade puts it right at that ounce per inch. This is a superior knife. I really like it. <laughs> I know, I've said that a bunch, but you know, um, one of the weird things about having a YouTube channel is that you start chasing the new. What's the newest? What's the most recent? What's the, you know... And it is really of great benefit to me as a collector when something that has been around a while shows up in my possession and gives me an opportunity to go back in time a little bit and remind myself that there are excellent knives that are out there that aren't the most expensive, that aren't the most recent. If you're looking for an excellent automatic knife from a reliable company in a good steel with good ergonomics, 
The Benchmade 4400-1 CASBA is a total win. Uh, this is, as far as I'm concerned, a keeper. I'll have to talk to uh, Women Carry Knives about that and see how she feels, of course. <laughs> <laughs> After all, she was the one that got the box of knives. But, um, yeah, I mean it. If you guys are looking for a great sidefire knife that doesn't break the bank, comes from a great company, this, this is going to be the knife for you. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up now. Thank you so much for watching. This, again, has been the Benchmade Casbah. I have been a Therapeutic Edge. You have been my amazing audience. We'll see you next time.